velocity as a derivative in the kinematics sequence for calculus-based physics. I had covered in a prior lesson on kinematics, speed, and velocity about how velocity is um, how we quantify the rate of change at which the position happens, all right? So we're including a factor of time when we consider distance. And we can look at just average velocity, which is the displacement divided by the elapsed time. Average velocity happens over a longer time period. Instantaneous velocity is at a single point in time. And when I introduced this in the prior video, I had given this summary slide where we focus more on average velocity and average speed as opposed to instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed. So average velocity and average speed, we need to think about a distance over a period of time. Instantaneous velocity, however, we're going to pull in our tool of calculus in order to look at that. So when I look at that velocity at a particular instant, what I'm doing is I'm taking the limit of the differential of the position function, okay? So the function will be uh, represented with time as an input variable, and we'll take the differential with respect to time of that position function. And so uh, we need to know calculus. I prepared a lecture that you can look at talking about simple derivatives. And what is known and covered in that lesson is that the derivative is represented by a tangent line to the position graph at a given value of time. That's what makes it instantaneous is as I look at an instant, a single given value of time. And if you imagine a graph that's curvy at each different point, the tangent line is going to have a different slope. So that's what we look at is the slope of that tangent line. I'm going to remind you that velocity is a vector, so instantaneous velocity is going to have vector properties. It may have um, a negative sign or a positive sign. It may have x and y and or z components, and you need to take that into account when you work with that. I prepared a couple of examples for us to look at. The first is looking at a graph and focusing on the tangent line feature of the velocity. Uh, given the position versus time graph here, here's position versus time, and you can see that this object is doing different things, uh, moving away from its initial and then toward, towards the origin and then away from the origin, um, and it turns around, turns around, and so it has some interesting motion. Um, and it asks about what is the velocity at, at different what values at different times. Identify the time or times at which the instantaneous velocity has the greatest positive value. So what we want here is the um, greatest positive slope. So we're going to say the m, the slope of the line is positive and it's the largest slope, largest slope. So when I look along here, I'll only be looking at this region here. Let's see. Yeah, the positive, if I look at a tangent line, the tangent line will have a positive slope in this region. Um, it turns negative here, it's negative there, and then from G all the way up to, I would say, L over here, it'll have a positive slope in those regions as well. Okay, so I've isolated it down to where is the slope positive, so from C to G, E, C to E, and G to L. And in those regions, we're going to ask, where is the slope the largest? So where is that tangent line having the largest slope? So I would say D is a good um, not candidate there. Uh, when I look at H as opposed to I, those aren't as steep as D. Uh, J is not as steep as D. D and K is not as steep as J. So I'm going to say that um, the instantaneous velocity based on the slope of the tangent line is going to be greatest at D. Okay, And that's as easy as that can be. We're just looking at that slope of the tangent line. At which times is the velocity zero? 
Well, when I look along here, it's not going to be the times where the slope is negative. We're going to have a negative slope in this region, a positive slope here, negative slope here, positive slope here. What we're going to notice is that there's going to be points where it changes from negative to positive or positive to negative, and those are the min or max. And if you know anything about derivatives, it's very convenient for us to take a derivative and set it equal to zero in order to find those min or max points on a graph. So we're going to notice at point C the slope of the tangent line is zero, point E the slope of the tangent line is zero, and I would say over here at L too that's going to be zero. So C, E, and L. Sorry my E and L look the same. Okay, so that's where the velocity is zero. And I've already pointed out at what times is the velocity negative. So these are going to be intervals. I'm going to have the interval from A to C. And then I'm going to have the interval from E to G. Those two intervals are when the tangent line has a negative slope. Okay. Uh, the next example I pulled up for us deals explicitly with the derivative of a function dependent upon time. So let's look at this. Um, a particle moves along the negative x axis according to a position equation with respect to time, right? x is position and t is time, and they give us 6t minus 8t squared in meters, all right? And so this is an application in physics. So what we learn in physics is the instantaneous velocity the instantaneous velocity. The velocity is going to be the time derivative d by dt of the position function. So we are given the position function. If we wanted to find the instantaneous velocity function, we would just take the time derivative of the position function. So I'm going to go d by dt of, and I'm going to change the powers here. I like to have the highest power out front, uh, negative 8t squared plus 6t, okay? Uh, you can distribute this to each term. Uh, we can do that in your mind if you like. I'm not going to do it out here explicitly because I have some other parts here. I want to use the space. Um, I'm going to bring the 2 out front and multiply by a negative 8, so I get negative 16. t, 2 minus 1 is 1, so I just have uh, t to the first power. I'm just going to leave it as t. Uh, t to the 0th power, um, t to the first power, right? t is just t to the first power. I'm going to bring the, the 1 down and multiply by 6. I get 6, and then I get t to the 0th power, which is 1, which I'm not even going to bother writing. So the velocity, the instantaneous velocity with respect to time is negative 16t plus 6. So when it says, what is the instantaneous velocity at t equals 3 seconds? Well, I'm just going to plug in 3 in here. v of 3 equals negative 16 times 3 plus 6. Uh, that's 48. I get negative 48 plus 6. So the velocity at 3 seconds will be negative 42. And this will be meters per second, right? When I do um, a differential, I'm going to have x is in meters and time is in seconds. So um, that'll be in meters per second. So that's what you would put in that box. The instantaneous speed, well, uh, when we look at physics, there's a difference between velocity and speed. Velocity has some sort of direction. We can see this is in the negative direction. Speed has no direction. So what they want us to do here, the speed, is going to be the absolute value of the velocity at 3 seconds. So it's just going to be 42 meters per second. Easy thing. Okay, what is the average velocity? Okay, so this is different than instantaneous velocity. When we find average velocity, what we're going to have to do is uh, the difference quotient, or the average rate of change, um, between two points. So we're going to take um, x of 3, subtract off x of 2, let me fix that real quick, and then divide by t2 minus t1, right? It's at a position at 3, it's at a position at 2. If we find the average, the, what, basically what we're doing is we're finding the distance between those two points and we're dividing by the time. And that's going to be the average velocity. So um, 
I will find x of 3 and I'm going to find x of 2. I'm just going to plug time into the original equation here. So we get 6 times 3 minus 8 times 3 squared. So I get 18 minus 72, uh, which is a number. Negative 54. Okay, so at 3 seconds, the object is at negative 54 meters. Uh, let me do this again here. 6 times 2 minus 8 times 2 squared. So we get 12 minus 32, which is negative 20 meters. So when I find this average velocity, and we're going to go like this, the average velocity, and um, we put a bar over it, uh, is going to be um, negative 20. Nope, sorry. We do the second point first. Negative 54 minus negative 20 and divide 3 minus 2. Okay, that's easy. Just one second. Over one second. So uh, 54 plus 20 is going to be negative 20. 34 over 1. So our average velocity between those two times is going to be negative 34 meters per second. Notice it's different than the, average, than the velocity itself. The velocity was at 3 seconds. This is the average velocity between two points. So you're noticing the difference between the derivative, which is instantaneous, and the difference quotient, which is between two values of x. 6t minus 8t squared in meters, all right? And so this is an application in physics. So what we learn in physics is the instantaneous velocity. The instantaneous velocity. The velocity is going to be the time derivative d by dt of the position function. So we are given the position function. If we wanted to find the instantaneous velocity function, we would just take the time derivative of the position function. So I'm going to go d by dt of, and I'm going to change the powers here. I like to have the highest power up front, uh, negative 8t squared plus 6t. Okay, uh, you can distribute this to each term. Uh, we can do that in your mind if you like. I'm not going to do it out here explicitly because I have some other parts here. I want to use the space. Um, I'm going to bring the 2 out front and multiply by a negative 8. So I get negative 16. T, 2 minus 1 is 1. So I just have uh, T to the first power. I'm just going to leave it as T. Uh, T to the 0th power. Um, t to the first power, right? t is just t to the first power. I'm going to bring the, the 1 down and multiply by 6. I get 6, and then I get t to the 0th power, which is 1, which I'm not even going to bother writing. So the velocity, the instantaneous velocity with respect to time is negative 16t plus 6. So when it says, what is the instantaneous velocity at t equals 3 seconds? Well, I'm just going to plug in 3 in here. v of 3 equals negative 16 times 3 plus 6. Uh, that's 48. I get negative 48 plus 6. So the velocity at 3 seconds will be negative 42. And this will be meters per second, right? When I do um, a differential, I'm going to have x is in meters and time is in seconds. So um, that'll be in meters per second. So that's what you would put in that box. The instantaneous speed, well, uh, when we look at physics, there's a difference between velocity and speed. Velocity has some sort of direction. We can see this is in the negative direction. Speed has no direction. So what they want us to do here, the speed, is going to be the absolute value of the velocity at three seconds. So it's just going to be 42 meters per second. Easy thing. OK, what is the average velocity? OK, so this is different than instantaneous velocity. When we find average velocity, what we're going to have to do is uh, the difference quotient, or the average rate of change, um, between two points. So we're going to take um, x of 3, subtract off x of 2, let me fix that real quick, and then divide by 
T2 minus T1, right? It's at a position at 3. It's at a position at 2. If we find the average, that what, basically what we're doing is we're finding the distance between those two points and we're dividing by the time. And that's going to be the average velocity. So um, I will find x of 3 and I'm going to find x of 2. I'm just going to plug time into the original equation here. So we get 6 times 3 minus 8 times 3 squared. So I get 18 minus 72, uh, which is a number. Negative 54. Okay, so at 3 seconds, the object is at negative 54 meters. Uh, let me do this again here. 6 times 2 minus 8 times 2 squared. So we get 12 minus 32, which is negative 20 meters. So when I find this average velocity and um, we put a bar over it, uh, is going to be um, negative 20. Nope, sorry. We do the second point first. Negative 54 minus negative 20 and divide 3 minus 2. Okay, 